Last time on Restaurant Startup. I freaking love s'mores. Nice. A couple from Oakland hit the sweet spot with their alcohol-infused treats and gourmet s'mores. I like the brittle a lot. That's delicious. And while they struggled with accepting change, I feel like we're kind of selling out. They pulled off a wildly successful launch. Wow. Mm, that is delicious. Mm -hmm. Joe and Tim had different visions for their business. I am not interested in investing in a nickel and dime candy shop, so I'm out. Okay. We're a long ways apart. A million dollars. So I'm sorry, I'm out. And Sugar Knife went home empty-handed. But will someone get a deal tonight? Joe Bastianich owns 30 restaurants and co-owns Italy, a high-end Italian market. Tim Love is a celebrity chef with five award-winning restaurants and a retail empire. They're both looking for the next food visionary, and they're willing to put their money where their mouths are. Each week, Joe and Tim will give just one team $7,500 and 36 hours to turn this empty space into their dream restaurant. Then they'll open the doors to the public. It's really good. I really like it. If one or both think there's serious profit to be made. The flavor of that is awesome. They'll offer to bankroll the business with their own money. Tonight, Joe and Tim cozy up to a pair of comfort food concepts. Now, who doesn't like macaroni and cheese? And that's a whole lot of Mac love. We've developed the very first hot made-to-order donut company. We've got lines out the door before we even open. Will one of them walk out with a deal that could change their lives? This is Restaurant Startup. Up first. Kelly Chapman and Catherine Berry, two friends looking to launch a brick and mortar restaurant built around mac and cheese. I make macaroni and cheese like your grandmother used to make. Macalicious is different because it's gourmet, it uses the finest cheese and a little bit of Kelly's down home southern roots. We started Macalicious as a food truck. If I could just have a stationary site that's in a high traffic location, we could be more successful. Kelly is my best friend. I want to help her out as much as I can, but I do not cook. My macaroni and cheese is the best out there. I have this vision, and I just want to see it through, and I have put everything into this. So this investment is super important. Hey, my name is Kelly. And I'm Catherine. And we are thrilled to introduce Macolicious. Now, who doesn't like macaroni and cheese? It's America's ultimate comfort food. Originally, Macalicious started off as a food truck selling to over 17,000 people. By owning a cafe, we can expand our menu to an endless array of comfort food with a twist options. So to start, we're asking for $250,000 as an investment, and in return, we'd like to give you 40% of the company. Macalicious, the good, 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 good stuff. Mac lovers love. Is your mac and cheese better than your singer, or, or vice versa? The mac and cheese, I don't have to be nervous. It's always going to be the bomb. We need to taste it before I even have any more opinions. What do you think, Joe? You want to taste the food? Yeah, I'd love it. I'll take so it on your right, you've got my American with asparagus and bacon. And then on your left, you've got the five cheese with Asiago, Fontina, Gruyere, Parmesan, and cheddar. I think the flavor's good. If you don't like mac and cheese, you get kicked out of my state anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no offense. I mean, you put all that in one pot, it's going to taste good. I taste the noodle, you can taste the cheeses. I think it's good. Like, how did you start cooking? Who taught you? I am not a chef. I grew up learning from my grandmother and my mom. So they taught me how to make soul food. You're the sole owner of Macalicious? Yes. And then where do you come into play here? I do whatever I'm asked to do, serving the food, running errands. The only thing I don't do is I don't cook. Does she pay you? No. Uh, do you pay yourself? No. This is a dream of mine. Um, sorry. She needs it because it's her passion. Your passion is making money. Her passion is making food. People love my macaroni and cheese, and I know that I will be successful. I feel <laughs> sorry. You have a food truck. Yes. So what's your sales on an average day? Then? Average day, I'll do anywhere from 1000 to 1500 I sell the macaroni and cheese bowls anywhere from $5 to uh, ten fifty. Revenues in 2013, which was our first year in business, were 198000 We had a net income of 17000 So on 190 you net 17 So that's like 8% uh, margin. Yes. I think in a food truck selling pasta, you should make more. 
You want $250,000, right? Yes. So how are you going to spend that $250,000? It's going to be used to buy the equipment, which is going to run us roughly uh, $55,000. We're hoping to find an existing restaurant location, so roughly $100,000 in um, the build-out and $30,000 for the point-of-sale system, and then also have at least two to three months of operating expenses. So you think you can build the restaurant for $175,000, and then you want the rest in working capital? There's that. Yes. Where would this restaurant be? I would love for it to be either in the heart of Hollywood or in a busy mall. I want to be in a high traffic area. Now we're talking. Okay. What's it going to gross in its first year? $1.2 million. $100,000 a month, $25,000 a week, $3,700 a day. What's your check average? It's going to be $1,150. $1,150. So $330 covers a day at 11 bucks to gross $3,700. Right. Right. If it's yeah. quick serve, you can yeah. do 300 people at 11 bucks a piece. That's, That's a still a lot. Tell me what this restaurant's going to look like. So I'd like to do a limited service restaurant. Mm -hmm. 20 seats, 50 seats? 10 to 20 seats. I think the logo could be a little more aggressive. It doesn't say, we got the most badass comfort food in the world right here. OK. What will be served in this restaurant? Just macaroni and cheese? At least six different types of macaroni and cheese with meat as a side. I'm just thinking, like, just mac and cheese. Can it really drive enough traffic? Do people really care enough about mac that's and cheese? I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I get what you're saying. They come to you at the food truck and all that, but a restaurant is different. So that's where I get a little bit nervous about this. A lot of people can make mac and cheese OK. Now, yours is better than OK, but your projections on a brick and mortar are a little bit unrealistic. OK. But I mean, you know, that could be worked on. Joe and I are going to talk about it. And then we'll make a decision to let you know if you get to go forward. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. I appreciate Have a nice it. day. Up next, Brian Christie and Riley Meehan, a 20-something couple who want to turn the humble donut into a hot new trend. Bespoke Donuts is a company that offers a donut unlike anything you will ever have. They're complete works of art. I met Riley two years ago, and we've been together ever since. Thank you. Thank you. Really, everything relies on this happening. We both quit really good jobs, and we invested a lot of time and energy into this business. And we need an investment to get that storefront in order to move forward with our company. I'm Riley. And I'm Brian. We are Bespoke Donuts. We've developed the very first hot made-to-order donut company. We've got kimchi donuts, pulled pork, Pina Colada Donuts. Currently, we have two pop-ups that we do in San Francisco. One is at a small cafe, one is at a bar. And in just two and a half short months, we've got lines out the door before we even open. Last month alone, we made $5,000 in profit in just two short days a week. We're asking of you $100,000 for 10% of our company to invest in our very first brick and mortar restaurant in San Francisco. And from there, we'll move on to the world. Global domination. Global donuts. domination via donuts. Let's taste them first before we go on. Yeah, absolutely. So your first one is our take on a strawberry shortcake. Okay. Uh, so the inside is a strawberry infused custard and a dehydrated strawberry on top as well. And we use caulking guns to fill all of our donuts. Like the caulking gun like you would use to grout your shower? Exactly. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the texture of the donut itself is really nice. It's really good. I mean, I think they're a little bit heavy. You know, you can feel like there's a lot of weight to them. All right, so the next one. That's our take on a pulled pork. The filling is a jalapeno cheddar cheese, crispy onions, and scallions on there as well. It's actually quite good. The meat's well cooked. All right, so let's try about the last one. So the filling on that one, you're going to have a popcorn-infused custard. The ring around the top is a pretzel pot of shoe, and then there's caramel corn with some pretzel bits in there as well. The pretzel's awesome. Thank you. The dough is very dense. It's actually an interesting dough. They're steamed off first, so similar to a Chinese bao bun. And then they're flash fried. What happens if you don't, if you don't steam the dough, if you just fried it? The only problem with that is that we can't do them how to order them that way, because some will overproof and some will under. I just still find that, is there any way to make them lighter? There's absolutely a way to make it lighter. It would just be a matter of figuring out that recipe. The cooking's all you? Yeah, it's all me. I started working in the restaurant of my father's. So you grew up in a restaurant? Absolutely. From there, I went to culinary school right out of high school. What do you do? As of right now, it's kind of the branding. And I'm also working the numbers as well. Bespoke Donuts is a nice name. I think the name's awesome, actually. Uh, I Thank think you. that the logo definitely could be improved and really say a lot more about what it is and what the shop is. I agree. Would you sell more savory or more sweet? 
We get a lot of people coming in buying the trio. And how much is the trio? The trio's 15. If you buy them individually, we sell them for six. Expensive. Holy smokes. At 15 bucks for a flight of three, what's your food cost? 60 cents per unit right now. That's massive margin. Yeah. Yes. The food market's is. great. Do you think 15 bucks for three small donuts like that is like sustainable on any kind of like scale? I do, absolutely. Why do you think that? Our last pop-up, we sold 500 donuts in two hours. You think you can do that every single day, 24-7? That's how you get to a million bucks. We can sell 100 units a day and still turn a profit. You can't pay the rent selling 100 donuts a day. I don't care what you write on your spreadsheet. I'm just telling you the reality of the world. It just doesn't work. I think that you guys are super inexperienced, super young, and you really have no idea what it is to be in the commercial food business. I mean, what is it, like 12 weeks or something you've been doing this? The novelty itself hasn't worn off of it yet. So will it carry? Joe, what do you think? Why not a food truck? The food truck industry right now is so congested. Everywhere you look in San Francisco, there's food trucks. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if you can deliver a brick and mortar in San Francisco for $100,000, then I'm interested. I just don't think you can do it. I think it's a cool idea, man. I, I, do. I don't disagree. I think it's just very much a novelty. I mean, like... I think it's a novelty, but I'm going to disagree with you on the fact that I think it's got some wheels to it. It's an extravagant consumption, something that's very expensive for the cost of it. It's not going to compete with a with That's a why I like item. it. We're going to think about this, and we'll let you know how we move forward, man. We, we really appreciate, appreciate your time. time. Thank, Thank you very much. Your donuts were great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, moment of truth for you. Only one of you is going to get $7,500 in 36 hours to uh, have the opportunity to test your concept right here in L.A. And then we will either decide or not to to invest in your concept and make your dream a reality. What I like about these guys is they're going into a market that's been around for gazillions of years, yet I feel like they've got a product that's very unique. But Macalicious has something that they don't have. They've been in business. But... One of the biggest problems with, with Macalicious is that it's a, right. it's a menu item restaurant, which I'm not a fan of. I think their big deficiency is they've never been in business. Yeah, so I, even though they're in the same category of Americana comfort food, situation. they're completely opposite. This is a tough decision, but we can only give one of you the opportunity to bring your business to reality. One empty restaurant space. Two teams with big ideas for comfort food. The investors will choose the concept that combines great flavor with an even greater potential for profit. Now, Macalicious. I think that macaroni and cheese is really something that, that people all over the country like. It's a comfort food. It's a fast food. It covers so many different parts of the food spectrum. Bespoke donuts, you guys are taking something that's ingrained in American food culture, reinventing it, and creating something that has an incredible potential for profit. So different reasons to like each concept, but both very, very likable. Like I said, we can only pick one. We're gonna give you $7,500 and 36 hours to test what you guys both feel like is a viable opportunity right here in LA. So today, we're gonna choose Bespoke Donuts. Congratulations, guys. Thank, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very Can't much. Thank you I'm really interested to open the doors and see how they respond. Great. Bespoke Donuts. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So excited for this pop-up. We have everything riding on this. So I really hope we do well with this. We get a donut shop in LA. <laughs> this is so this is awesome. Walking into space, it is kind of stressful. It was very barren, but at the same time, I could see me and Brian working behind that counter. It was awesome. We got to make this our space. Joe and Tim let us know that we really needed to work on our dough. So for me, it was really important to hop right into the kitchen, test a few new recipes out, see if we couldn't manufacture a better dough. Hello. Hey, how's, how's it going? going? How are you? Doing Good. well. I'm Brian. Brian. I'm Riley. Hi, Riley. My name is Waylon. And I am Joe and Tim's consultant. Great. 
So I am their eyes and ears. Joe and Tim have given you $7,500, and you have 36 hours to transform this space into your donut concept. I need you to account for every penny you spend. If you can't properly manage that money, you can't be trusted with their investment. You need to hit three things and knock them out of the ballpark. First, taste. You need to have light, fluffy, delicious donuts. Secondly, branding. Your logo and concept needs to be concise. And lastly, growth potential. You need to show that bespoke donuts can make money. Joe and Tim need to see an improvement on those heavy donuts that you serve them. Yeah, so right now we're actually trying a new dough, okay. which is a little bit risky since we don't have a lot of time to manufacture it, to figure out if it's gonna work. Yes. But we tried cake flour in our dough as opposed to an all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. We added a little more baking powder and a little more yeast to see if it could be a little fluffier. And how awesome. much time are we looking at for the... Uh, Let me check the steam, okay. we can check them. Perfecting a dough recipe is not easy. It can take months of trial and error to get the taste and texture consistent. So I'm really impressed to see that these guys are getting started on it right away because this is the most important part of their business. So right off the bat, I'm noticing they're not nearly as pretty as our other batch. It doesn't have that shiny top. They're not smooth. Did you just change the recipe but use the same mixing, baking same method? Same method, yeah. Did you try it? I didn't try it. Let's give it a try. It loses the flavor, I think. There's no flavor. It's chewy. It's very chewy. It's, it's very, very chewy. Heavy. Yeah. I'm not happy with these. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah. Well, you definitely have a very big dilemma that they might not invest in a donut business if they actually don't like the donuts themselves. Right. Yeah. However, you have a lot to accomplish. So before you go back to perfecting your dough, I have a few people that I'd like you to meet. Should we go? Let's, Let's do it. Do All right. Meet. Brian and Riley take a break from building their donuts to start building their brand. The design team is waiting outside the kitchen, ready to help Bespoke bring their vision to life. You did me with Tim and Joe, and did you guys discuss the logo a little bit? They said it needed work. Yeah. Um, our last logo was just plain text. So, okay, any initial thoughts on how you can incorporate the custom donuts into the logo? Uh, this was an original idea of our logo. The modern milkman is what we keep referring to. Sort of that Art Deco, vintage -y feel, but modern and comfortable. And okay. I really want to do kind of a 1940s style writing. So like the retro, more yeah, retro feel? absolutely. Yeah. This definitely says milkman to me. What it doesn't say is donuts. Yeah, yeah maybe he has a donut right there in his hand. OK, I'll do a guy holding a donut, and then I'll try some other ideas that I think sure. might work. Yeah. So I want you guys to tell me what you want to do yeah. in here. I've got actually some stuff in my notebook that I could show you. OK. Yeah. I think our color scheme, that sort of white, black, sort of teal colors, maybe an accent wall of all teal or something. For design, I've always thought that less is more. Keep it simple, keep it clean. So we chose the teal for the wall. Um, it's a very nice, calm color. Yeah, love the teal. And what's your serving ideas? Yeah. We love people seeing the process of our donuts being made. Okay, so we want the food prep yep. here. We want tables, we want chairs, we want teal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you Brian, so much for taking so much time with us. Appreciate thank it. You. This is gonna be fun. Yes. As exciting as redesigning the space was, that first new batch of dough was horrible. We definitely want to perfect that dough. Our business revolves around these donuts. If they're not perfect, we don't have a business. I'm gonna get a few batches rolled up so we can start steaming them off. Hi. Hey. How's it going? How are you guys? Just Just slightly stressed. Stuff done. <laughs> As you should be very stressed. Yeah. <laughs> a lot to do and a lot on the line. Yeah. Big stakes. In very little time. Yeah. <laughs> so I see you made a whole new batch of dough. Yeah, I think it's gonna be better. Sounds good. So how many donuts do you guys have ready right now? You right now have we that? have 130. So you have 130, 130 donuts 130 ready. I have four batches of dough rising right now. So that'll yield us another 160. And I plan on making at least two more. But I, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to bang out some delicious donuts. Well, I'm glad you have a lot of donuts ready because you're going to need them. So if you guys want to come with me, I want to show you something. OK. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. What? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Tim and Joe thought Riley and Brian are really inexperienced. They've had a couple two-hour donut pop-up shops. But this will be a great way to test their new dough recipe and see if they really are going to make it in the food industry. This truck and you and your donuts are going to be headed to Miracle Mile 
parked in front of the LACMA Museum. You will have an hour on that truck. This is a huge opportunity to have a test run before the launch tomorrow. Use this opportunity to find out if it really is something that's not just a novelty and if people really will pay $6 for one of your donuts. I'm excited to stand behind there and represent Oh my God, donuts. I'm so excited to just be like, <laughs> this is ours. It's a brick and mortar yeah. on wheels. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Let's do it. It's lunchtime, and the bespoke team needs to move fast to take advantage of the heavy tourist traffic outside the museum. But before even one donut has been sold... Are we looking on time? We got people. There's trouble on the truck. We forgot to turn on the fryer. It's not heating up quickly. It's just, like, bubbling. It's not doing anything. It's not browning them. I'm so stressed out. We've never worked on a food truck before. So sorry for the wait. Thank you for your patience. Waylon returns to check on Brian and Riley's progress. Why aren't you serving yet? I can't even tell you right now. It's this is a disaster. Our freaking fryer isn't hot yet. It's at 220. It needs to be at like 350, 375. This is a problem. You guys have to figure out a way how to serve these people. Coming up. What's up with that color? That's the color that they chose. Whoa. Holy they really went with it. Hey, guys, have you tasted the dough? I think it's a good product. This is not the donut that you pitched us. Brian and Riley's lack of experience is becoming painfully clear. They forgot to turn on the fryer, leaving unhappy customers waiting to be served. About five minutes? All right, thanks. I'm going to go ask to see if anybody else has a fryer, and maybe we can fry some off okay. in another truck. Hi, we're running the donut truck over there. Do you have a fryer that we could possibly use right now? Yeah, I've yeah. got one here for you. Great, thanks yeah. so much. That would be yeah, awesome. you're welcome. Is it ready? Yeah, I got hot, fresh ones right here. With the fryer situation under control, Bespoke is ready to serve their first donuts. We got to do the 3 for 15. So this is the popcorn right here. No, I just got to see what a $6 donut looks like. How big is it? <laughs> this is what your $6 donut looks like. Pretty fancy donut. It's kind of fancy, but not that fancy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Could I try the cold pork? That sounds really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Total's going to be $8. How was it? It was excellent. I, I, yeah? I, I didn't know what a $6 uh, donut tasted like. And was it a $6 it donut? It was definitely a $6 donut. Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Amazing. All right. The pulled pork is, like, unexpected. Oh, my God. I'm going to eat all of this. The strawberry so, shortcake. The strawberry shortcake? Right. Absolutely. So I noticed you just finished eating a donut and you're in line ordering another donut. The flavor was just popping in your mouth. I think it's time for me to try some myself. Tim and Joe are looking for, first and foremost, taste. So I want to taste their donuts and see that they can create good quality food under pressure. I want to see what's going on inside. It's the moment of truth. It's very just good balance, like yeah. good flavor. I like the fact that it's not too overpoweringly good. sweet. There's like a really good outer crisp yeah. on the donut. All right, there's your beautiful pulled pork donut. I have to say, <laughs> I like the savory one a lot better. This like kind of more melted in my mouth. I like a little bit of crunch. Yeah. I like the spice, like in the cheese. Really, awesome. really good. But it definitely is like heavier, a right. little bit chewy, chewier of a dough. So I definitely see what Tim yeah. and Joe were talking about. The bespoke dough has improved since earlier today. It's lighter, but it's still dense and chewy, so I really hope they continue to work on it. All in all, how was this experience? It was great. We got really good feedback. The price point was a big issue for Joe and Tim. The people who were kind of iffy about our price point, they came back even and told us, hey, this was a $6 donut. Are you happy how you dealt with everything today? Fryer wasn't coming to temperature. We had customers waiting. Big no. challenge, no. but we worked through it. Joe and Tim are going to like that, but you like thought on your feet and made it happen and pulled it off. Overall, a great learning experience for us. On the way back to the restaurant space, Brian and Riley hit up a farmer's market to buy fresh ingredients and finalize their menu. The locally grown organic produce and farm fresh dairy products add up, and the food comes in at $557 leaving them just under $7,000 in their budget. Back at the restaurant, the bespoke vision is coming to life. 
Oh, oh yes. That color is perfect. It's looking great. I love the color. Yeah, it's great. You picked it. You love it. I'm happy. <laughs> My mind is blown. Paints up. There's samples of the artwork that's going to go on the walls. I am so absolutely thrilled right now. The interior design costs come in at $3,050, bringing their remaining balance to $3,893. Brian and Riley turn their attention to the business plan because Joe and Tim didn't think they could open a brick and mortar in San Francisco for $100,000. There would be three employees per day, uh, production chef filling needs for the next day, and the other employees frying, ordering, and barista. I want to get as realistic numbers as possible. I need to rework the whole thing. They call up a commercial real estate broker to get a feel for the market. There's some available restaurants in the area that you're looking for, and they hold their $6,000 home range. Awesome, yeah. Joe and Tim made it clear that our numbers were ridiculous. We raised our ask amount to 150,000 because we felt that we would be able to build our storefront more to the numbers that they thought were realistic. Despite their concerns, Brian and Riley decide to make the dough and fillings for the big launch one day in advance. Usually, Riley and I make our dough right before service, but we're making the dough tonight just so that we can focus on the launch and make sure that everything else is perfect. We're stressed out about our dough, but we're going to stick with the food truck donut recipe and hope that they fluff up a bit and proof a little bit more for the launch. Oh, yeah. That is good. You guys ready to talk logo and graphics? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'll show you what I yeah. got. That one is a little too kid-like, I yeah. think. I think we could get rid of this one. Yeah, I don't like this one because there's too much. Yeah. This one's kind of cool. cool. I like yeah, yeah, I like that. I like this a lot. This is awesome. Let's roll with it. Let's Great. do it. So, yeah. The graphic design costs come in at $1,815. Brian and Riley are now done spending money, even though they have over $2,000 remaining in their budget. It's launch day, and the restaurant space is undergoing a teal hued transformation. But for Brian and Riley, their very future is on the line. If the opening goes smoothly, they could score a big investment and open their very own brick and mortar shop. Wow. <laughs> Seeing the storefront all together, our names posted, our logo everywhere, the tables all out lined up perfectly, that was a surreal experience. I, I wanted to cry. That was my baby right there. This is insane. I'm so excited to do this today. Bespoke staff arrives, and Brian and Riley need to figure out how to set up their front of the house donut making operation. Fry them up, hand them to me, we'll assemble. Coffee and food can both come out that end. Joe and Tim arrive. Let's see what we got here. Anxious to see how their potential investment is shaping up. Bespoke donuts. New logo. Hello. Hello again. Uh, hey. The type set is like is reminiscent of what? It's kind of like a vintage, like a deco. A deco, kinda, right? Yeah. Like New York Absolutely. 30s. So that's what they're going deco for? Deco feel, yes. It just doesn't say food to me. What's up with that color? That's the color that they chose. I'm curious to see the inside. I bet it's all that color. <laughs> you imagine? I, mean, I, I bet it is. Let's go inside and see if they got it. Come on. Whoa. Holy <laughs> They really went with it. Coming up. This is really <laughs> greasy and dense, man. Jesus, look at that. I don't want to eat that. The product to me is absolute misery today. Brian and Riley have brought their vision for Bespoke to life. What Joe and Tim think of it could determine if they invest or not. Whoa, holy <laughs> They really went with it. What color is that, teal? I don't know if it's so much a food color. Well, it's in color for shoes. I almost say it's in color for donuts. The light pictures are cool. Yeah, they change those up. The logo looks almost the same, except for adding a weird-looking guy in the O. Yeah. What do you think about this art? It's all very deco, very New York-y, quite frankly. But you don't think they should have framed these? It's like, it just seems cheap. They were very like conservative and reserved in everything their money? they were doing. I don't know if it's just because, yes, they are young and green, or if you two scared the <laughs> out of them in the pitch, but they, they were both. very timid. So how do they do? They did great. I have to say, when you thought the donuts should be lighter, first yeah. thing they were doing is trying to make them lighter. They were thinking on their feet. They got creative. It's good. They, yeah. So they make it happen. They make it happen. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot, yes. actually. Well, I want you guys to get in the kitchen Let's and go to the kitchen. see what's going on in there. How are we doing, guys? 
How's it going, Joe? Yeah. Good to see you as well. We don't see anything in the kitchen. It's all up front right now. So all the production's going to be done out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. So people can watch you. Yeah. And... We've got a lot of people coming in. The efficiency mm -hmm. of how you put the donuts out, like speed, that's yeah. one of my major concerns about yeah. how this business works. You're making them one at a time. Right. When they come in, I want to make sure we're moving them through the line. Yeah. I just want to get a good feedback and see what's right. happening before we can sit down and kind of analyze the numbers, especially. It's lunchtime. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Bespoke is open for business. Welcome to Bespoke Donuts. Go for it. Um, one of the strawberries. OK. The carnival and the pulled pork. And you can pick up your order right over here. Oh. You can also watch them build your donut. So you want to do all five and two glasses of milk? The launch started out great. We had the customers coming in. We had a flow going. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. But the flow quickly turns to gridlock, as Bespoke's made-to-order donut assembly can't keep up with demand. Well, look, he's got a line, got a line right here. How long is this stuff taking? Two and a half minutes for donut. Including the frying? Including the frying. Yeah. So two donuts every five minutes. And then this one's going to be your pulled pork right here. Yeah, when did you order? 15 minutes. I started to see the tickets pile up. I got nervous. Seeing Joe and Tim made me nervous. I think the setup that we had, it looks great, but I don't know if it's necessarily the most efficient. Working so far from Brian, it's really hard. Normally, we're next to each other. We can communicate. We can talk about who's getting what donut. So you need a few more people, huh? Yeah, uh, Stuart's in the back there frying some up. Stuart, he needs some help. My vibe is all turned off right now. How's it going? It's cold. It's cold? Yeah. Let me get you a hot one. I really apologize about that. Yeah. We got any hot ones? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Thank you for bringing that back. I really want to make sure that they're all hot. Many customers endure a long wait, but those already eating aren't too happy either. It's too dense. Too dense. Is it safe to say at this table the consensus is the dough is a little heavy? It's, it's a little, little heavy. A lot Absolutely. Heavy. <laughs> a lot heavy. Okay, we're not even saying a little, a no. lot heavy. It's not what I thought it was. It's not active enough. Oh, no, the that's rises why, more, that's, it gets lighter. No, that's why, that's why they're coming out so dense. Well, like, what is, like, look, this is really <laughs> It's like greasy and dense, man. Yeah, it's very, it's, look at that. <laughs> like, something went wrong. Joe and Tim call Waylon into the kitchen to help them figure out why the dough is not up to par. It's a, it's a sandwich, it's a fried sandwich bread. That's yeah. why it's not a donut. It's like a biscuit. It's like super dense. I think that these guys invented this as a cottage industry. So the process here is about what kids can do in their apartment, dinner parties and pop-ups. We're talking about a commercial donut operation now. This is really not edible. These are too dense, they don't taste good, they're too oily, they're too greasy. I'm not a baker, that's what I'm asking you. I absolutely agree with you. This tastes drastically different than from what I tasted yesterday on the truck with them. Leaving their dough unattended and to proof overnight is a huge mistake. And it overproofed, and so it ended up being flat and dense and way too chewy. I wouldn't pay $6 for that. I wouldn't eat that if you gave it to me for free. Hey, guys. Guys, can you stop working for yeah, one just minute? one second? Yeah. Have you tasted this? Have you tasted the dough? When did you taste it? Before service. Before service. Before service. Yeah. Are you happy with it? Uh, I was okay with it. Okay with it. No, I like that. I I think it's a good product. The ones that you're producing right now, you guys are satisfied with. We yeah. sense that there's something that's not right. They're not being produced as hot as I would like them to be. They are not hot. Period. They're also really dense. Okay. They're, this is not the donut that you pitched us okay. at all. Coming up. We need your support and your help. My so question to you is, are you ready to have our help? Want to get an investment for your breakthrough food concept or product? Apply now for Restaurant Startup. Visit restaurantstartupcasting.com. Joe and Tim have halted service at Bespoke Donuts because the dough tastes terrible. This is real now. Yeah. You are not ready for real yes. because this feels like a home so, bake sale. I'll tell you this. I came in here thinking I'm behind these guys. I like them. But the product to me is absolute misery today. There was something wrong with that dough, definitely. I didn't want to serve them, but it was a slip of my judgment to send them out. The donuts are your chance of investment is based on your donuts. And so basically that means it's you need to 
make new dough. This is the most important dough and donut that you're going to make, and you need to make it right, okay. right now. Okay. I'm gonna go back and mix the dough, okay? I'm sorry, I'll be right up, I'm sorry. I'm really upset right now. This is not a bespoke showing. This is not what we, what we do, this is not who we are. Leaving Brian up there to flounder with these donuts and me back in the kitchen trying to make the best product I can under all this stress is too much. While Riley frantically works on a new batch of dough, Brian struggles to keep the crowd under control. Do you latte? Latte? I just want to know what you're missing yeah, so that yeah. I can get that all for you. Here I am having to greet the customers. Now I have to go take over doing the donuts and working the registers. We really needed Riley out there. People are making food. When things are not right, they stop. Someone right. says, OK, stop. You see this it is in not face, right. They're freaking out a little bit. It's a fundamental problem with what we're trying to do is invest in people who don't even know what's wrong with their own With a fresh batch of hot donuts finally ready, orders are being filled. And Brian and Riley are hoping they can get the launch back on track. Thank you. I love the pulled pork. It's just so unique. I would tell everybody about it. Okay, yeah, it was really good. Oh, yeah. I would come here. Joe and Tim take the temperature of the crowd as customers fill out their surveys. Would you go to a place that serves this kind of food and pay for it? It would be a cute place to take kids and get a milkshake and have a shortcake. Yeah. I like the pulled pork. It's just tasty. The components on the donuts are well made. I don't know if I'd pay six bucks for it. Well, well for the size, six bucks is a bit spendy. When the doors close, there's no relief, just a sense of disappointment and possibly a missed opportunity. I'm mad at myself. I want to break down and cry because I wish I could do something about that last two hours. I just know we're better than that. We tried. <laughs> we up today. <laughs> Let them know that you know you up. Let them know that you know it needs work and show them that you do have what it takes and you can do it. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Thank you, Waylon. We tried new dough, and I think that's going to show something to them. We'll make this work. We'll bounce back. <laughs> Their restaurant dreams are slipping away. Riley and Brian's only hope is that donuts made with the new dough will change the minds of the investors. So before we get into anything, Brian and I just need to say that we f***ed up. We were not happy with the product we were putting out. We went back in the middle of service and made a new dough. Did you taste these? Are these? We did. Are these correct? Yes. It's, it's lighter in weight itself. Yeah. This is much better than what I ate today. It's crispier. It's crispy. It's, yeah. No, it's, it's definitely back yeah. to the standard of the pitch. But I feel it could be better. The biggest problem for me was not that the food wasn't at the level it should have been. That was obvious. Is that neither of you guys kind of took a moment and said, stop. It took us to put the brakes on the train. And today was a big, big wake-up call. The dough is wrong. The process is wrong. The implementation is wrong. I think the toppings of the food were really good. It's just dough problem. We gave you $7,500. You had $2,000 left over. Maybe you all should have consulted with somebody. You know we wanted the dough to be a little bit lighter. I mean, 2000 bucks a lot of money to bring somebody who knows bread really well in here for a day. No. Let me talk about what the people said. Did you enjoy the food? 85% said yes. Did you like the dough? 42% said yes. Uh, would you return? 68% said yes. Worth the price? 47%. So people said, I don't know if I come back. It seems pretty hefty. And then, did they like the logo? 68% said yes. And the donut that you have on the sign doesn't say anything about what your donuts look like, which didn't make any sense to me. You guys added some guy with a hat in there. I'm like, so I think the logo still needs some work. What about your business plan? Let's, as yeah. long as we're on, on that. <clears throat> so we wanted to go back and redo the numbers and make them what we thought were more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, so we have actually raised the number. What's the total? We would say 150,000 at 15%. Right. You're still valuing the company the same. Here's the deal. I like the idea, but I don't like the idea that you guys just think it's OK of, of what just happened, and I should just give you 150000 Like, hey, you know what? Let's try it again. Then if it f up, what are we going to? Hey, give me another hundred grand. let us try it again. I can sum this whole thing up for you in one word, and I think you know what it is. It's inexperience.
that's why we're here. We need your support and your help. My to question to you is, are you ready to have our help? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't ready. And your four months of experience tells you that you are ready to have yeah. my help. Let me ask you a question. So you believe that this one menu item culminates all the years of experience you have in cooking, all those years in your parents' restaurant. Is this the ultimate evolution of this product, or can it get better? This donut is very good, but right now where we're at with this dough, I'm very happy with it. I believe in this donut like nothing else. Then you're just as immature as I thought. Are you hungry for restaurant startup but don't want to wait another week? Visit us online. Go to cnbc.com slash restaurant dash startup. This donut is very good. I believe in this donut like nothing else. Then you're just as immature as I thought. I'm out. So here's the deal, guys. I think if the donut happened like you told us it was going to happen, there'd be no question in my mind that I'd want to give you money. Now, my struggle is, I'm trying to decide, do I want to give you money anyway? Because I think the concept is pretty good. Why, sh why should I do it? Right now, we're making each unit for between 40 and 60 cents a piece. And we're, yes, charging the $6 per. And we could even drop that down a dollar and still have a massive margin. Do you think that an efficient market allows for 1,000% markup on food items? No, because people won't buy it. I think that you, know, you guys have done these little deals, but you haven't really operated on a full scale. And this is a very small version of it. This is two hours, and you struggled. And so, I don't know, I'm, I'm back and forth. Like I, I, I mean, I actually thought you guys were gonna come to the table and say, okay, look, if we get the money, we'll give you a little bit more of the company because clearly we need a lot more experience, and, and, but that's not what you came with. I think it's a, a brilliant idea. And I came in here today literally with my wallet in my hand. Quite frankly, I wanted to own a donut shop today. But you just don't have the experience. I mean, I'm behind you guys, but it, I'm just not gonna give you my money today. I think you guys need time to do a little more growing up, a little bit more soul searching. And I think you have success within your grasp. So nice to meet you. Thank you for everything. It was nice Thank to meet you. Thank you. It's been invaluable. Next time. This sucks. But you know what? It was a great experience. Even though you didn't see a great showing from Bespoke Donuts today, we're going to go back to San Francisco, heads held high, and push forward. That was tough. I like those guys. CNBC Tuesday night is Deal Night.